Hey folks, I'm Carol here from Data Doosers and in this video I'm going to show you some of the main date calculations that you can do in QuickSight. The reason we're doing this video is because one of our viewers had a question about it. So his use case is that he has all the dates in a month and he wants to know what is the ending balance for only the last day of that month. So if you look at the way that you can work with date filters and stuff like that in QuickSight, there's not a way where you can actually define an end of the month or a particular period in which you want to focus on when you have multiple rows of dates in this case. So for that, we're going to use the sales pipeline data set. Let's take a quick look at it and see what we have here. And we have a date column, which is apparently daily aggregated. And we have other metrics that we really don't care about. But translating the use case into this context, well, let's say that we want to see the weighted revenue for only the last day of each month. So let's go ahead and visualize this. So I'm going to select the table here and I'm going to add my date into the rows and my weighted revenue into my values. So now I have for all my dates, I have the weighted revenue for that particular day. But because of my use case, I only want to see the ending balance for the last day of each one of the months. There's no way that I can set up a filter out of the box in QuickSight that is going to return that to me. So I need to create calculated fields to actually accomplish that. So ideally, what we would like to do? Well, I would like to create a calculated field that for each one of the rows returns the last day of that month. So for example, for January 2nd, I will see January 31st. And that's going to be what I'm going to see for all January rows. For February 3rd, then I will see February 29 or 28, depending on the year. And that's going to be the same for all February and so on. So let's go ahead and start building that. I'm going to add a new calculated field. And if you look at here, you have date calculated fields. And there are a couple of them. We're going to cover trunk date and date if right now in this one but please go ahead and understand each one of them and see how they work there's a lot of documentation about that because you are probably gonna end up using all of these for different purposes so take a look at each one of those to understand what you can get out of those the first one that i'm going to do is truncate date and what truncate date does is it's going to truncate your date to one particular period. A period can be a year, a quarter, a month, as you can see here, a date all the way to a week and seconds and milliseconds, depending on the date that you have. So in this case, I want to truncate my date to the month. And my date is my date column. And what this is going to do is it's going to read each one of the rows where I have my date and it's going to return the first day of that month because that's what truncate does. So it takes a date and it truncate that date for this specific period. In this case, is month. So it's going to return the first day of that month. So let's add a name. Just going to name it like that. I'm going to save it. Now, if I add that one now to my rows, I can see that for all January, it's going to return January 1st, and the same for February, and the same for March. So this is not quite what we want, but we're closer now, because we have fixed the same date for all the rows. Now remember, for January, I want January 31st all the time, and I have January 1st. How do I do that? I could add 30 days, but that is not going to work all the time, because not all the months have 31 days. You have months with 30, with 31s, and February is special. So uh, you have to think in a way that dynamically 
we can change this. So for that, what I can think of, you can have a different plan, is let's edit this calculated field and let's use the date add. And in this case, is add date time. So you will see that it adds or subtract a unit of time from a date time value. And what we want to do now is, instead of going to the first day of that month, I want to get to the first day of the next month. So let's add that. And I have an amount, a period, and a date time. So what I want to do is add one month. So one, my period is going to be month, and my date is going to be the truncated date. So this should add one month to my truncated date. Let's save that. And now instead of having January 1st, I have February 1st. So I'm going to have the first day for the next month. And that's closer now. But this is not yet what we want. We want the last day of this month. But now this is going to be very easy because now all we need to do is subtract one day from the dates here. And let's go ahead and let's do that. And all we need to do is apply again the add date time function. We are going to subtract one day. In this case, we are going to change the period. We're going to subtract a day from all of this. Now, if we save this, now we have what we want. And this is going to be dynamically calculated because it's going to find the first day of the next month and it's going to subtract one day. So no matter how many days February has, no matter um, the, the number of days for each one of the months, we are always going to get the right result here. And that is great. So now, how can we show only the last day of the month? Because, yeah, we have this, but we still have all the days. So now that we know what this field is doing, I'm going to remove it from here. And I'm going to add another calculated field to use as a filter to show only the last day of each one of the months. So I'm going to add a new one. And I'm going to say is end of month. And here is just a simple conditional saying that if my date, that is going to be the column with all the different dates, equals my calculated date, the field that I just created, meaning that that is only going to be true when the last day of the month is active, then I'm going to return yes, else I'm going to return no. So I'm going to save that. And now for this view, I'm going to add a filter that is going to be based on this field that I just created. And here it's going to be a filter list and I'm going to select only those that end up being yes. And if I apply that, then I only get those months where that matches. So in the case of February, for example, let me go back. And February probably doesn't have the 28th, right? So that's why February is not showing up here. And that is correct. Probably this data set is not the greatest example for this, but that's what we have. So for February is not showing because the data for February 28th in this year is not in the data set. But you have that for March, for April, for May, and so on. And that's it. Then you have the weighted revenue for the last days of each one of the months. So that's achieving what we wanted, right? We wanted to see the weighted uh, revenue for only the last day of the month, and this is going to be dynamic. We don't have to worry about the number of days in each one of the months and so on. We can go even further. We can actually create a parameter if we want to get fancy and we want to allow our users to only see one particular month or one particular year, but that's up to you. This is a very basic example. I hope that's helpful. You can apply these concepts to do pretty much anything. So we demonstrated how to find the last day of the month, but you can use this same logic to get, I don't know, any day of the month, the first, the second, the third, you name it. 
this is a way that you can achieve that and you can do it by day you can do it by hour that's up to you depending on your data anyways we wanted just to put it out there because this is a valid use case thank you all for watching i hope that this was uh, useful to you if you like our content please click like subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with the content that we publish thank you so much for watching and see you around